Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're gonna to be doing our last push to see if we can get to top 1200 Mythic. Haven't been too diligent this month, just I haven't really felt like it. Um, but we're kind of like, we're at 97%, so we'll see, do some games. But I really wanted to kind of highlight, uh, a lot of folks have been asking about Alchemy decks to use for the qualifier. Uh, if you are doing the play-in qualifier, there's the option typically like past months to play best of one. I think this is the better route and the deck we're going to be featuring today is the deck that I have been really happy with. I'm 117 and 44 with the deck as you can see. Uh, it's my take on mono red aggro for the format. So this was the updated version of the deck that I got number one mythic with in August. I've consistently held between a 70 and 80% win rate with this deck. Uh, since playing it, there's a couple variations, Thundering Raiju versions, Mephits, uh, Burn Spell version, so uh, Mechanized uh, Warfare version. I think this version is the best, but I'm biased because I have a really good win rate with it. So we're going to demo the deck, see how it plays out. Um, I know folks are like, rah, 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 alchemy. Um, I like this deck. It's fun to play. If you don't like it, don't have to play it. You could skip the qualifier, but this is for the people who've been asking. Um, so we'll get through it and see if we can make the push. So what we're trying to do with this deck is hit as hard as possible, as quick as possible. Bunch of one drops. We got Kamano that pumps our team, uh, Exiles, puts counters, Swiss Spear gets bigger with Prowess. Phoenix Chick is evasion and can come back from the graveyard. We have a burn package of Lightning Strike and play with fire that can go face. Then we have the Tiefling Outcast, which is two bodies in one and is kind of a Lord effect, plays really nice with the big spenders as well. Um, which gives us treasure tokens if our creatures get blocked that we could then spend for miscellaneous stuff. I think pretty much I always get Heralic Banner or Filigree Familiar if I can. That's pretty much what I get. Um, but then you have uh, the Molten Impacts. I like Molten Impact better than Mephits. So Mephits gives your creature larger power, but it's no card advantage. It's only answering one creature. Your creatures generally will kill them anyways, like over time. I like Molten Impact because you can deal with the creature and then you can either point like a Lightning Strike to the face, kill a second creature, or it's basically two removal spells often in one. Um, so it helps control the board and it's also just four damage, which is useful in this format. I'm on three Ambergris as kind of the fill card. Uh, and you'll see that we just top out at three mana. It's the Ambergris to refill our hands as well as the Traumatic Prank to steal our opponent's things. Um, I was down to two pranks, one, uh, what's the goblin, Krenko, uh, goblin, forget its name, uh, the, the legendary one, Squee, um, but there's been more shield your decks, so I've been playing with that, two Mishra's Foundries as creature lines as well. So we'll give this a go. I think I was 97%. The ladder has been like really kind of gross this month. Like if we look at just trying to go up, I went 13 and one and I started at 95% and I only got to nine, 98. So it's kind of like ridiculous the climb this month. Uh, probably one of the worst that I've seen in a while just in terms of percentages of wins to just not get you any progress and then like that one game i lost i dropped two percent so it's like you win 13 you go up three percent you lose one you drop a percent to two part of it is to alchemy's ladder tends to be a little bit skewed and i just find like there's less people playing this month um so usually with hands like this i lead with the tiefling if you have it on one uh we have removal that can clear the space but then especially on the play we do this but then I have Swiss Sphere with Kumano that we can also play as well. Okay, so blue-white control. We need to be of, of, aware of Divine Purge here. Um, so I actually think here... It's just Kumano. Play second Tiefling. Um, these attack for four... The following turn, I could put a counter here. Drawing two of these in a blue-white control matchup, which is typically be indicative of, feels kind of bad. Um, I think this turn... I'm just going to do this. If I do this, it's 
only a point of damage. I basically just want to play around Divine Purge. I don't want to have all my things purged. I have this coming back next turn. Hopefully they just go like Oracle of the Alpha. That's fine. Um... I think this turn we do it. They had a sweeper, they would have used it that turn. But here I get him down to four and then... So that matchup was actually a little awkward, drawing three of our seven... There's only seven cards in our deck that aren't good in a creature matchup. Sometimes if they're playing... Like if you're playing against black-white control, they usually play a little bit more creatures. Uh, they have usually have more Planeswalkers, because the thing is we didn't even have a target for that. The plus size with Divine Purge, we would have got another cast of um, Kumano, which does another ping. We could reset the counter. Okay, playing Solkanar, the Swamp King. Um, so this hand's fine. Opponent goes first. I'm still going to lead on the Tiefling here, I think. We'll see what they play, because that'll be indicative. Because if I'm going to have to... I think we still do this. Cut down. So the black matchup's a little tough at times. I don't have the double red here. Um, I think we just go check here. I usually, if I know they're on mono black, will lead with check because if it dies, it's not that bad. Beginning of your upkeep, return target creature with power less than. Okay, so you aren't actually a magic card. I'm going to do this because I can store up enough to hit Shieldred if it comes down. This is a little weak into Meat Hook Massacre. It's an easy bird here. Um, I think we just do this. Attack, don't discard. Because now I just have the burn in hand, so like a land kills um. Get a gain ten that way. Um. That's six. So six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're done here. Easy games. Don't know why you're playing this. You're playing up to Corrupt and Invoke Despair. You're probably not playing Creatures. Takes us. So even like two wins, we've only gone up a percent. Let's see if we can get to like numbers. Might be a little tough. This deck just like punishes though. The life gain deck can obviously be a little tricky, uh, as is green-white enchantments. Molten Impact does a good job of helping to control in that matchup. Double Strike. Just going to do this. 
The fact that it prevents us from attacking in is what I don't like about it. I have two banked up so I can steal something. So we'll do this. Okay, they take the damage. What's good here is if they play a big angel, I can steal it and then shoot that. Because this is good too, because now I get to steal the Giada. So I get to do this. Kill this, and this is where Molten Impact is really good. Okay, so just see that six, eight. We'll take the one. Take the two anyways, for good measures. <laughs> Let him know who sent them. Eating up on angels, don't even know what this card does. <laughs> don't care what it does. This deck's like absurd. It also makes uh, your daily of attack with 45 creatures really quick. Playing a 96%er, hopefully this gets us up a bit. Sounds not bad, because if it's a creature mirror, well, I prefer one of these to be a Molten Impact. Uh, going 1-2 is fine. Obviously prefer to be on the play. Okay, they mulliganed. So it's a mirror. I'm going to lead on Phoenix Chick, because I might have to Lightning Strike on two. Yeah. We're going to Strike here on two. I'd like another land, if possible. Perfect. Um, the turn here, because next turn I could T-Fling. And Lightning Strike, I could T-Fling, and Big Spender, we have some options. Play Draw, we're in a better situation here because I have more pressure on the board. That's fine. Well, we lose the Chick. So this version still plays Kumano. Or not, um, Raiju. Take a chance with them hitting the Raiju here, but I think I... I don't win the game by being passive at this point. Especially because I have Ambergris in hand, I'm going to want to empty my hand. Just do this. I may actually trade with the Kumano here. See what they bring out. I don't want to throw out an Ambergris. Their hands. So I th think here. We do that, 
trade here. I think at this point... We dig. Okay, play with fire is actually pretty good. Take the block there. Didn't think they'd actually block there. Now we're in a good spot. I, that's why I don't like the Bloodthirsty Adversary version. You're too mana reliant. And you play, you don't play like a huge density of lands in the deck. You're usually playing 22. They had a good start. And one thing here, don't, like when you're on the, uh, the draw, don't be afraid to trade aggressively. And then, especially if you have Ambergris in hand, Ambergris lets you catch up. But the thing is you want to get multiple attacks. I think our opponent was a little too aggressive with those lightning strikes on the Phoenix Chick. Phoenix Chick can't block and it's only attacking for one a turn. Um, so the clock, they were still winning that race, all things considered. So 121 and 44 with the list. My worst matchup tracked. I'm 31 and 18 versus red. 18 and 8. So 63%. Um, life gains pretty bad. I lost a Demir deck that had Meat Hook on 3 when I dumped my entire hand of one, uh, X1s. Tansen's okay. I think we could control a creature mirror, so I think we're fine. More often than not, it's creature, and if it's control, then I'm happy with this hand anyways. So I don't want him to get the second copy here, and then I have Molten Impact to two for one, so this is going to be a game where we're playing control. Opponent, I gotta play with fire for you. I'm not live streaming, you can't watch me. Obviously if we were on the play, this hand's even better. So they have a play with fire because they had priority. See if they want to target their own. So we're doing this because then I could lightning strike or I can deal two creatures. See, that's wrong. So they might be digging for a land, but in this mirror, play with fire is actually really good because now I can attack unimposed potentially with an Ambergris afterwards. Hopefully they go two creatures here. Uh, we'll get the Mishras going. I want to hit two creatures with the stored up energy here. Haven't seen yet if they're on the Raiju version or not. Uh, target my own. I think we just pass here. Mono. Okay. Big Spender is actually pretty good. Mm. 
They're incentivized to play a creature. Obviously for the Kumano. If they like lightning strike my fate. Oh, that's perfect. Take out Ambergris. I play my land, play my own Ambergris. And that's just where the patience comes in. Double Tiefling, nice follow up here. But now I got a lot of threats. And that's how it's done. Should have saved the play with fire. Also, you could see that game there. I guess, like, they wanted to kind of go for it with the Ambergris to refill your hand. You're also getting the bonus. But I was passive for a couple turns with mana up. So that should be indicative that my hand composition is burn spells uh, as opposed to creatures. Because then I'd be playing to the board. Okay, so we did get into numbers, which is a good sign. So basically took me going. So I went 6 and 0 here. So sorry. I went 7 0 13 1 15 1 16 and 1 to go from 95% to 1600. I've played Kronos before. I'm going to try this hand. We're on the draw. I have two one-drop plays. Alright, don't, don't make me look to be a fool. Land. Deck, I said land. I think that keeps worth it. Come on. I'm like very close to being in this game. Provided I could. Okay, so line one. Get rid of you. That's a start. Because now I can get rid of two things. With Mephit, I want to have up the Lightning Strike. So I'm down to three life. We just, we missed lines too many turns. I can't afford to take another hit here. Strangle's fine. Um... Play with fire, gets with any haste creature. 
I can hit face. That's fine. I need to pivot and go fast. So that's five, eight, ten. Not quite lethal, so we're just going to wait right now. That's three. That was a good win. Holy hell. They kind of just flooded. But they have too much fluff. Ancestral Angers are just win more. You cycle the card to do an extra point, but you need creatures on board, which doesn't help. Strangles, if that strangle was anything that went face, you're in a better situation. We saw their method. If they had Molten Impacts, they store up an additional burn. They do a better job there. So they had, like, this is where some of these decisions... I can't, like... Are we just like making no progress? So I won and I went down percentage. It's so frustrating. Let's give this one more go. If I'm just kind of stuck, like I might just call it. Like there's no point. I've literally gone 8 0, and I went from 98 to 100%, and I can't actually break in. This hand's sick. Okay, so when you can go Tiefling into Big Spender, I usually do that. You know, the burn. So this turn, I'm going to do this. Because then I can go big spender the following turn. Okay. Interesting. It's like Rakdos Agro. Little annoying the life gain element of it. I, I just don't want them to go bigger with Kalein, and I'd rather steal their, like, payoff card. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if they're on Obnixus, which is kind of annoying for our deck, just with the pinging. Might have been right to hold this in case we draw another land. But if they go, like, Mishra here, I steal it, win. I mean, they got. They could be on Meat Hook. Oh, they're just dead. It's like Rakdos Vampires. Or uh, Mardu Vampires. Bye, friend! Alright, do we break into numbers? We've literally gone 9 0 at 1400.
Okay, still says I'm 1400. I'm 120. I have 80 more wins with this deck than I do losses. Playing Extrapolator. Keep. Like I said, on the play, I like going Tiefling Big Spender. I have the option of using removal if needed. Mind spike, non creature, non land. They could have a removal spell here. The one thing I want to be mindful of they could be on Meat Hook Massacre. Unless this is just the Rakdos version. Um, I think we're just pushing as much damage as possible. They have meat hook, they clear this. I could hit them with double play with fire. That's seven. That's just also lethal. Bye, friends! And that's why I like the Rakdos match. You can't play discard in this format. What do they do? They got rid of a lightning strike. They took two damage anyways. So it just kind of evened out. Ah, I got a delivery. So I'm going to wrap this one up. That was a demo of the deck. I'm probably going to keep pushing. We'll see how it goes offline. Uh, try to do that top 1200 push, see if we can get it. Um, but the deck is nuts. The deck is absurd. 125 and 44 with the deck, clean 10 0. Stats don't lie. I'm not gonna, you know, deck I'm broken. I played three games. I've played almost 200 games with this deck. So it's legit. Let me know what you think in the comments. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching.